These films are great on their own, but we need to see more. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 awesome British films that need a sequel. Me and him need to have a little think. Well, don't think too long, because someone's going to make a killing on these pills. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking movies that we feel deserve another instalment to further explore their worlds. Perhaps the original closed on an ambiguous ending, had fantastic characters we want to spend more time with, or we simply want more of the same. And as we'll be discussing the end of most of these films, some spoilers are incoming. Number 10, Ex Machina. By the close of Alex Garland's sci-fi masterpiece, rogue AI Ava has murdered her creator and locked her saviour in the facility, possibly forever, while she sets off to discover the world beyond. A follow-up could show Ava's exploration of the human world, focusing on how she forms new relationships and evades the inevitable repercussions of her terrifying intelligence. In the process, it would do what all great sci-fi flicks try for by holding a mirror up to our own humanity. With the leash of a candid star continually rising, an ex machina follow-up could prove well worth the investment. Are you ever gonna let me out? Number 9, Lock Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Guy Ritchie's definitive crime caper also ends as if setting up for round two, with the gang desperately trying to contact Tom, who's on the verge of discarding two highly valuable antique shotguns. But what happens next? A sequel could answer our questions and expand on the character's amateurish criminal escapades. Did they save, sell and make their fortune on the guns, or just learn from their mistakes and become marginally better criminals? And what's Vinnie Jones up to these days, eh? You owe what you owe, and by the time this tan's faded, you want to have paid. Number 8, The Full Monty. Okay, now are you going to just stand there while some pup's waving his tackle at your missus? Where's your pride, man? She's already got you over in, I saw it and I let it go. A hugely successful British comedy and seemingly very much a product of its time, but The Full Monty could follow suit from train spotting, with a sequel centered on a group of friends thrown back together decades down the line. By now, some of the original group could be stripper veterans, while some could be training the next generation of male entertainers. There'd be one character though who's put all that behind him, and the movie would follow the efforts of the rest to persuade him to perform. One last time. Alright, you've had your little laugh, now you can piss off. It's a free country. Number 7, Brazil. This one, sister, is a 9mm submachine gun used for close quarter combat fighting. Terry Gilliam's dystopian nightmare offers a perfectly grim conclusion, setting up Sam's happy ending before tearing it all away in the closing moments. The follow-up wouldn't necessarily continue Sam's story, but instead further explore the abominable society of this future Britain, where bureaucracy is king, picking elements from today's world that threaten our humanity and incorporating them into the story. As with Blade Runner 2049, nods to the original could be interwoven into the narrative, creating a familiar but wholly new experience. We want value for money, and that's why we always insist on the principle of information retrieval charges. Number 6, Hot Fuzz. Michael, will you escort the sergeant off the premises when he's quite finished? Yarr. Now that Nicholas Angel has settled into the Sanford Police Force and the evil Neighbourhood Watch Alliance are defeated, a new threat could rise to challenge the plucky group of police officers. Edgar Wright's affection for ballsy American action films delighted fans when played out within a quaint English village, as did the additional elements of traditional English folk horror. But the main draw of a sequel would just be to spend more time with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost's easy charm and potent on-screen chemistry. Number 5, Layer Cake. I'm sorry. At the climax of Matthew Vaughan's directorial debut, Daniel Craig's cocaine dealer has bested his enemies and seems all set for the early retirement he wanted only to get shot in the film's final scene. Layer Cake 2 could show him back in the business he had tried to leave before, more jaded and brutal than ever before, and becoming the kind of crime boss we'd previously seen in Michael Gambon's character. With Vaughn's slick direction and following Craig's tenure as James Bond, it would ooze intensity and style. This thing finishes here now today, understand? Well, it doesn't matter what I do. 
This lot are going to come after you. Number four, Children of Men. A sequel to this 2006 epic would follow the story of Key and her baby, the youngest person in the world by 18 years. In it, they traverse a dystopian landscape where the very existence of the child puts them both in relentless mortal danger. But what if they discovered more children? And more determined mothers? It's not definitely confirmed whether Theo dies at the end of the original or only loses consciousness, but you can never have too much of Clive Owen, so he'd be back too. Number three, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Your whole planet has been blown up. It's actually quite surprising that this sci-fi comedy hasn't garnered the second film, given the rich history of radio broadcasts, stage adaptations, and literature based in Douglas Adams' fictional world. Of course, the logical sequel would be a faithful retelling of The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, the second novel that was hinted at the end of the film. Given the stratospheric rise of stars Martin Freeman and Sam Rockwell since Hitchhiker's Guide was released, it wouldn't be a surprise if a sequel was eventually made. Although, the loss of the irreplaceable Alan Rickman may be a setback. Excuse me. <laughs> Number 2, 28 Weeks Later. I'm not sure what's happening here, but it's good. Okay, that's the point. The possibility of 28 months later eventually happening has been touted for years, but it's reportedly still caught in development hell. Regardless, the ending of 28 Weeks Later sets up the sequel superbly, amidst an apparent infected invasion of Europe. With the entire continent under threat, we'd see how different countries and cultures handle the epidemic, striving to survive the hellish hordes of monsters. This one surely has to happen, before a logical fourth instalment 28 years later. Would 28 decades be too much? Centuries? Millennia? Oh God, I love you too. Number 1. Dread. Defense noted. Many moviegoers are surprised that this balls to the wall action film is a part British production, and we're pretty proud that this ultra violent comic book adaptation helped wipe away all memory of Sylvester Stallone's awkward take on the character but fans are screaming for a deeper exploration of Mega City 1, especially as we've only really seen an isolated tower block over a single day so far. Poor box office figures stagnated the development of a sequel, but talk of a TV series has been kept afloat, with star Carl Urban confirming he's in negotiations to reprise the role. Crossing fingers now. Your assessment's now over. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.